So, Eric, this obviously isn't the first spy slash assassin film that you've ever made. Uh, one was obviously steeped in historical events in Munich, while the other was, this one is much more fictionalized and highly stylized. But I'm wondering what it is you think about the world of espionage and spies and assassins that audiences and filmmakers find so interesting. Well, that's a very good question. I don't know if it's so much about spies or assassins more so than than the kind of energy that is created by the situations they're in and that's what i love about you know the great spy kind of thrillers or you know movies from the 70s and so forth because to me the, the characters are placed in such great predicaments that everything that happens around them is completely believable and there's a sense of energy that never ever stops so that's to me what's important about it there seem to be a very uneasy, tense, and mysterious relationship between Marissa and Eric in the film. I'm wondering if there was anything that was in the script that didn't make it into the final cut that would have further helped explore that relationship. No, and that was actually part of the, the, you know, the fun part for both Kate and I is that there's clearly a, a major backstory to those two characters that was kind of up to us to, to fill in the blanks for each other. And, and uh, I didn't ask Kate too many questions about what her you know, version of that was and she didn't ask me. So it was kind of fun, you know, whether or not they were together at some stage in the past. It was, it was fun to have that sense of ambiguity, definitely. Yeah, definitely, and it created a tone in and of itself, yeah. uh, from, really separate from the film itself, that really, um, it really popped out at you. At that point. Well, yeah, I mean, and they are, they are harboring a, a very dark secret between them that, you know, has a major effect on, on, on her. By the time we hit the climax of the picture, we learned that uh, Hannah and Eric's uh, relationship isn't quite what it seems. Um, with that knowledge in mind, do you think, uh, what do you think Eric's underlying motivations were? Do you think that he was driven by guilt or maybe uh, a chance, a second chance at a new life, something like that? I think guilt has a, a very large amount to do with it. I think there's a, a, a kind of maybe a sense of destiny for, for, for Eric to, you know, as you say, um, have a kind of a second life and he's he's gone rogue from the CIA for for, for very good reasons and um, I, I guess you know there's a kind of parallel journey of redemption there for, for him at the same time. Now although Hannah has plenty of action scenes in the film Eric's were a hundred times more visceral easily. Um, how did you and Joe and the the choreographer go about designing these action sequences? Well Joe was extremely adventurous and what I mean by that is you know normally these these scenes, your choreography is left on the floor because the way that fight scenes are edited or compiled. Um, but what was great in this case was it was the opposite. Joe would say, the big fight you have with the five agents in the subway, I'm shooting it in one shot and there's no cuts. And initially it sounds intimidating and you realise that it's a huge challenge and a very rare one in this day and age in filmmaking. Definitely. So um, I, I just, I, I couldn't have been happy to have a go at that. and. You know, because it's that rare moment in filmmaking where everyone is re really a very small team and the, the steady cam operator and the focus puller and the guy carrying the cables, the background extras, everything has to be perfect on a take or there's just no way of it ending up in the movie. So there's a lot of pressure when you're doing something like that, but the adrenaline is something that you don't get in other scenes. And so. you're creating that magic. Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. Well, Eric, thanks a lot. Thanks really, a lot. Really Cheers. appreciate it. Love Thank the you. film.